Given a set of tasks of the following parameters, we need to apply the processor utilization factor test. So we need to use this formula to check the efficiency whether the task can be scheduled or not. The C is the capacity, the T is the period of time. And we need to use this formula for each task and sum all of it in order to get the value of U. If the value of U is more than 100%, that means it is not schedulable. If the value of U is less than 69, it means it is schedulable. Let's calculate each task. Right. T1, we have 0.24. T2, we have 0.2. T3, we have 0.2. If we sum all of it, then the value of U is 64%. And it is less than 69%. That means this task is schedulable. In this case, T2 has the smallest period of time. That means T2 has the highest priority. The next will be T3 because T3, the period of time is 10. And the last one is T1 because the period of time is 29. Let's look at the table below. Here, let's look at the T2. The period of time of T2 is 5 and the capacity is 1. So, it will execute one unit of T2 in every 5 interval. Same goes with other tasks, like for example a T3. T3 has a period of time of 10 and the capacity is 2. So that means it will execute a 2 units of T3 in every 10 interval. I hope it's clear. Let's look on the preemptive scheduler. We know that T2 is the first priority, so it will execute T2 first for one unit only. After it finish, it will execute the T3 for two units because the capacity is two. After it finish, it will execute the next task, which is T1. This is the first unit, second unit, and at the side, T1 must stop and wait because T2 has the highest priority than T1. And as we look on the table above, we know that every 5 interval, T2 must be executed. So th that is why there is an interruption happened here. If there is no other higher priority than T1, that means it will execute a T1 back. And at this size, until 11, the T1 must stop and wait for the next highest priority, which is T2. Because in every 5 interval, T2 must be executed. After T2 finished, then the next priority is T3. So that means T1 still need to wait until T3 is finished. Then after T3 finished, it will continue execute T1 again. This is the last unit of T1, so that means T1 is completed in its period of time. And after that, it will continue doing the same routine again and again until all task is completed. This is a non preemptive scheduler. Non preemptive is the opposite of preemptive. That means there is no interruption happens while the T1 is being executed compared to the preemptive scheduler. As you can see that every task is executed normally without any interruption. So some task has met their deadline because the following task will have to wait for the current task to finish before execute it task. This is because, as you can see, from 5 to 10, there is no T2 executed. So that means T2 has missed or met their deadline. 